Hey guys, today I'll be showing an aggressive gambit to counter the French defense. So let's get started. The French defense starts off with the moves e4, e6, d4, and d5. So for this gambit, we're going to play the move pawn to e5, which is the advanced variation. For those of you who do not play the French defense, let's quickly talk about the pawn structures and the dynamic of this opening. So as you guys can see, white's pawns are located on d4 and e5 of the board, compared to black's pawns on d5 and e6. This means that in the French, white usually have more space as the white pawns are pushed further forward, and the pawn on e5 here actually controls some of the key squares on d6 and f6 as black can't play a normal move like bishop to d6, on knight to f6, so it's a bit difficult for black to develop his pieces. Also, black's bishop on c8 is blocked by his own pawn, and even if black were to develop this way with b6 and bishop b7, it would still be blocked by his own pawns as well. Similarly, for white, the bishop on c1 is considered as a bad bishop because the pawns on d4 and on e5 are of the same color of the bishop. So if let's say the bishop were to go bishop e3 or bishop f4, it would be kind of blocked by the own white's own pawn as well. And in some cases where white plays pawn to f4 further supporting the center, that would also further block the white's bishop as well. So what are the main ideas here in the French defense for both white and black? Black wants to play the move pawn to c5 to try to attack the center pawns, white center pawns and break them apart. And as white, usually we will want to protect our center pawn with a move like pawn to c3 to support it so that if black captures, we can recapture back with the c pawn and remain our solid center. So black will usually continue with a move like knight to c6, putting further pressure on the d4 pawn. We will play knight to f3, protecting our pawn. Black continues with queen to b6, again putting further pressure on the center pawn. And now, here we're going to play the move bishop to d3. Now, if you count the number of attackers and defenders, black has 1, 2, 3 attackers on our d4 pawn. Whereas for white, we only have 2 defenders with pawn and knight. So black can actually capture our d4 pawn for free right now. As knight takes d4, knight takes, queen takes, and black just gain a pawn. However, this is a well-known opening trap as we now have the move bishop to b5 check, discovered check actually because we win the queen on the next move. So black cannot capture on d4 yet and usually they will play a move like bishop d7 to try to take away this check on b5 later on so that they can capture the pawn on d4 now. Similarly, black could capture on d4 first and after recapture, bishop d7 is the same thing as it transposes into the position. So here, instead of defending the d4 pawn, I'm going to recommend you this move, castle. We are going to give away our d4 pawn like a gambit and invite black to capture on d4. Because after captures, queen captures, now you guys can see, the whole idea of this bishop d7 move was to cover the b5 square so white does not have the discovered check anymore on the king. So now, we are going to play another developing move with knight to c3, further gambiting another pawn on e5. So the most common reply for black here would be to play queen takes e5, accepting the gambit and capturing another pawn. Now we play rook to e1, developing another piece and attacking the queen at the same time. And already, it's not easy for black to find a move with his queen because for example, if he plays a retreating move like queen to f6, we can already play knight takes d5, capturing back one pawn, utilizing this pin on the king, attacking the queen, and also threatening to play knight c7 check. Also, if black plays a move like queen to d4, trying to protect this pawn, the pawn this way instead, we already have a brilliant tactical sacrifice here. So pause the video if you'd like to figure out this brilliant tactical sacrifice, which, which is actually quite simple, and it's just one to two moves. Alright, so the move here is to play rook takes e6, sacrificing our rook, because 
It doesn't matter which way black capture, recaptures back with the bishop or the pawn, we gain material anyways. So if bishop takes, now the bishop no longer protects this square on b5, so we have this discovered check, winning the queen on the next move. Same thing, if black captures with the pawn, now the bishop does cover this square, but it opens up another diagonal for the king on g6, and we play bishop g6 check, winning the queen. So the two main moves for black in this position according to the database is queen to d6 and queen to c7. Let's take a look at queen to c7 first. If queen to c7, as mentioned earlier, the d5 pawn is not guarded, so we can capture with the knight utilizing this pin on the e-file. And if black plays queen to c6, we have another very strong tactic with bishop to b5 giving away our bishop or giving away our knight because black cannot capture either ways. As if queen takes b5, knight c7, check, and we have a triple attack with our knight. And if black captures our knight instead, we can just recapture as the pawn can't capture the queen due to the pin. So as you guys can see, it's not easy for black to play as there are many, many tactics, tactical opportunities for white in this position. So if queen to d6, now we are going to play a quiet move with bishop to c4, moving our bishop away so that we protect our knight first. And the threat, the incoming threat for white is very simple. We are going to play bishop to f4, attacking the queen, and then going with knight c7 check as the bishop on f4 will support this square as well. So if black plays a move like rook to c8, trying to protect the c7 square and attack our bishop at the same time, we just play bishop f4 first, attacking the queen, as our knight protects the bishop as well. Let's say black plays a move like queen to c5. Now we're going to play rook to c1, protecting the bishop. But more importantly, we're going to move the bishop back on the next move, which attacks the queen and attacks the rook as well, and also threaten to play knight c7 check. For example, if white black plays a move like bishop to e7, trying to develop his pieces on the king side, we play bishop b3, and this is already winning for white, as the queen is under attack from our rook, and knight c7 check is coming on the next move. Alright, so we have discussed the second most popular line with queen c7. Now let's take a look at what if black plays the move queen to d6. So the queen now protects the pawn on d5, and we can't capture the pawn on d5. However, we can attack the queen in another way with the move knight to b5. If black plays bishop takes knight, we just recapture and we give check, there's no way for black to block this check without giving away his queen, so if after the king moves, the king will be stuck in the center and we have very good compensation for white. So most likely, black will play a move like queen to b6, move, moving away the queen and trying to attack our knight on b5. Now we have this move bishop to e3, with a similar team developing a piece and attacking the enemy's queen at the same time, so essentially gaining a tempo. And now, the most popular move for black in this position is to play bishop c5, but actually, this allows white to have an 84% win rate in this variation. So let's see why does this move allow white to have such an incredibly high win rate. Because after bishop c5, we just captures, queen captures, rook to c1, developing a piece, attacking the queen, but the threat now is after the queen move, we have knight c7 check. So it doesn't really matter where the queen goes, for example, queen e7, we go knight c7 check, and then we win the rook on the next move. Now some of you might be thinking, well, such a simple tactical idea or such a simple move like bishop c5 will only occur in low level games, right? Well, that's just simply not the case because Bishop c5 is the most played move in the Lee Chess database, and I was actually quite surprised to find plenty of very high rated games in this variation. So this just shows how powerful and tricky this opening can be, even catching really strong opponents off guard. The highest rated game I could find in the database was played a month ago at the time of this recording between two 2700 players. So the game continued, Bishop takes, Queen takes, rook to c1, and black knowing that he couldn't stop 
the threat of knight c7 check. He instead gave up his queen, and after bishop takes, this is just easy win for black. For, sorry, for white, because even though black can recapture the bishop, he's still down two pieces for a queen, and there's just too many threats coming to this position. For example, rook c7. Why can even play queen takes d5 now, and this it is just almost game over for black. So this is why this opening or this variation has an 84% win rate for white and even very high rated players fall into this trap as well. So now let's go back and discuss the best engine move for black in this position. It is, we already seen what if black captures on e5, accepting the second gambit pawn, but now what if black plays the move pawn to a6? Because in many situations early on we seen, we had knight to b5, attacking the queen or threatening knight c7 check. So pawn to a6 is like a precautionary move to prevent that happening in the future, which is also the best engine move. So now we can no longer gambit our e5 pawn and we have to protect it. So we're going to protect it this way with queen to e2. So, so far we have given up a pawn on d4, but if you take a look at black's position, it's actually not easy for black to develop his pieces because, for example, if he plays a move like bishop e7, that would just block his own knight from developing and black would not want to play a move like knight h6 because we can just chop it off with the bishop and this just creates weaknesses in black's kingside position. Also, if black chooses to develop the bishop, let's say, to c5, we, white has bishop e3 attacking the queen and also attacking the bishop at the same time, so it's not that easy. Therefore, the best way and the most played way for black to develop his pieces in his position is to play the move knight to e7, and then trying to develop the knight this way, knight to c6 to free up the bishop later, and then also putting pressure on the e5 pawn. Now, we're going to play a quiet move king to h1. And you might be wondering, well, what, what does that move do? Well, king to h1 is in preparation to play the move pawn to f4 as we can't, we couldn't play it on the previous move that this would just, our king would be pinned by the black's queen. So pawn to f4 and we're going to start marching our pawn forwards to attack the black's king. Black will continue with its development, knight to c6. And now we're going to play bishop to e3, attacking the queen, gambiting our second pawn on e5. Because after queen takes e5, now we're going to play the move pawn to f4 and start marching our f pawn forward. White, sorry, black will usually play retreat this way with queen to d6. And now we're going to march our pawn forward, pawn to f5. An important thing to note here is that this does not blunder pawn to d4 because it looks like black has a fork. But it's just not the case because we can play knight to e4 first, attacking the queen and then moving our bishop on the next move, or even playing a move like bishop f4 first, attacking the queen, and then moving the knight on the next move. So don't worry, and pawn to d4 is not a serious threat. So in most cases, black will play the move bishop to e7, because he wants to castle as soon as possible, and get his king to safety. Now we're going to play a preparation move with rook a to d1, and you guys will see the idea of this rook to rook a to d1 move later on. The move might not make sense at first, but it's actually quite strong as we are pinning, sorry, we are not pinning, but we are going to create threats along this d file on the black queen. So if black plays castle, it's a very natural king safety move that gets the king out of the center, but actually castling is already a mistake for black because now we are going to play the move pawn to f6 sacrificing yet another pawn, and now black has two options to capture. If he captures with the g-pawn, this is really checkmate, as you guys can see. The evaluation bar on the left shows m8, which means checkmate in 8 moves. So the checkmate starts off with a bishop sacrifice with bishop takes h7 check. The king has to take, otherwise if king to g7 or to h8, there will be queen h5 followed by checkmate soon. So king takes and queen h5 anyways, then doesn't matter he plays king g7 or king g8. We have queen to g4 check, pushing the king either to king h8 or king h7. Again, it doesn't really matter. 
And now we have this nice move with rook to f3, lifting our rook up this way to, de to deliver checkmate on h3. And there's no way that black can defend this checkmate. Okay, so if pawn takes, it loses immediately for black. Now what if bishop takes f6? We are going to continue our attack with another sacrifice with rook takes f6, opening up the black's position. Of course, if black doesn't recapture the rook, we just gain a piece and we can just retreat the rook on the next move and we still have this attacking ideas, same attacking ideas on the king, on the black's king. So after captures, similar idea shown in the previous variation, we are going to play bishop takes h7 check and after king takes, queen h5 check. Again, it doesn't really matter, he plays king g7 or king g8. And here there are many different ways and move orders to win, but I like this method demonstrated in the game on Lee Chess between two 2600s. And white played queen g4 check, again forcing the black king to the right side. And now here comes the whole idea of our preparation move with rook a to d1 earlier, because now we are going to utilize this pin on the queen to play the move knight to e4, attacking the queen and also attacking the pawn on f6, bringing our knight closer to checkmate the opponent's king. If black captures, we just capture the queen. And even though it might seem that black has a lot of material and pieces for his queen, it's almost checkmate for white already as there's queen h4 followed by queen f6 or bishop h6 threats and it will be checkmate soon as this bishop on d7 is under attack as well. So in the game, black played queen to e5 trying to protect this pawn on f6 and also trying to cover this queen h5 check. But after queen h4 check, this game is already over as after king to g8, knight takes f6 check, king g7 and queen h6 checkmate. So as I mentioned earlier, this opening or this particular variation does not only apply for beginners or intermediate players, but it applies even at the highest level of chess, grandmasters, 2600s, even 2700s, as due to the tricky nature of this gambit giving away our d-pawn and our e-pawn, it is very difficult for black to defend. And especially if he has not seen this variation before, it would be very easy for white to attack and win in just a couple of moves. So congratulations on learning how to counter and destroy the French defense. If you're interested in learning how to play the Raul Lopez opening, then click on this video. Thanks for watching and we see you in the next video.